So I tell all the speakers, and I coach them, we work together to centralize. I say, there's always one metaphor. I say, let's not try to get 15 pounds of flour in a 10-pound bag. I say that every time. <laughs> but there's one speaker who was determined to do it, and you did it. I left so much out. <laughs> you know, that was fantastic, Chuck. Thanks. And I got to tell you, people were mesmerized. I can tell from, you know, literally the comment stream. So uh, let me just see if I can get this straight. The line I didn't understand most was, I talked to DARPA, I got a million dollars. And then you move right on. Oh, yeah. <laughs> we want to know how you talk to DARPA and get a million dollars. It's a oh, big uh, thing in okay. the group. Oh, uh, okay. What we did was, uh, Hugh and I noticed that at the end of a very long and detailed offer for distributed robotics, a request for proposals, down at the bottom they had dot da 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 air land, they wanted little tiny miniature robots, and at the very end someone went, and water. And so we put, turned in a proposal. And we wanted, um, we sort of believed in the power of imagination. So instead of taking this wonderful CAD design of these little robots, we actually used a, a PowerPoint, uh, actually used Word. And we had an ellipse with robot written on it. <laughs> and uh, we described Hugh's work, and we described what we're going to do. And the short story is, they thought we were going to be least likely to succeed. And so since we were the outlier, they gave us money too. And it turns out we were the only group in that entire group that got all that money to actually have a real company and an exit event. So thank you, DARPA. <laughs> thank you. All right, that's how you do it. So for three and a half billion years, good designs have been eating bad designs. OK. Oh, yeah. So biology-inspired design, we do so little, we do none. A little, uh, uh, aside from uh, Hugh and I, not very much. Um, actually, there's some people out there that are trying to do it. They has, it was called cybernetics in the 60s, and then later it's called bionics, and then it's called biomimetics. Basically, you want to take the good parts, the simple essential minimum, out of a natural system. If you try to copy everything, you're hosed. Just take one part. Hugh and I copied just the algorithm of that little thing, and the robot only has one moving part. It doesn't have cilia. In fact, Hugh didn't believe that maybe we were going to get this to work, so we got nine, uh, nine tons of goo scheduled to come in in a giant tank with big windows and cameras. We're going to do this stuff at very low Reynolds numbers. You can take hours to go like a foot. And um, one Saturday morning, I just sort of, being the sort of duct tape idiot I am, I just got a whole bunch of rocket parts and a bunch of little motors and batteries and started putting stuff together. And guess what? It was he, things were swimming in helices that were big, because the stuff that he was studying was so small that the world is like, it's like swimming on warm molasses. That's, there's no coasting. So what is it with uh, health and medicine? Uh, we've, you showed us 75 years there where <laughs> a tractor doesn't move. That's it. Right? You know, I happen to know that the stone axe, which was originally invented by man to chop things, did not change its design for 600,000 years. Got to stick okay? the good thing. So there's no government. There's no regulatory. We didn't change it for 600,000 years. We go to the moon in 66 years. 65 and a half, yeah. 65 and a half years from Kitty Hawk to Tranquility Base. Mm -hmm. What is it going on here? Is, it, is there something fundamental that slows down innovation in medicine? Is there some fundamental fear to innovate in this space? Yeah, and actually, I'm going to put it in sort of a little bit different terms. I was so good. I was so glad when I saw the Surgeon General talk about joy. You can. You get the best results when you play. We should all be playing with each other and having fun. And you can tell that people are holding back when there's fear around. And so the surest sign of the presence of fear is the absence of play. OK? And the surest sign of the absence of fear is the presence of play. And if you're playing, you're goofing around. It's OK. I like to fail. I fail as many times as I can, as fast as I can, because that's when I learn early when it's still cheap. All right. That's a lesson. And I think you win the reductionist award uh, in a conference where we've been talking about network effects and complexity. You win the reductionist award. We are fibers and goo. Yeah. So thank you very much, Chuck. Thank you very much. <laughs>